As we start in chapter 3, we're going to start off with adding numbers with different signs. We're going to add numbers that are positive and negative. An important thing for us to remember as we're doing that is that we're going to do a little work with number lines. And the traditional number line we see starts with 0 and, and goes to the right. And it, it goes up, up in numbers, you know, maybe through 10 or through 20. But number lines can also go to the left and go into negative numbers. Negative numbers do exist. So if we're creating if we're creating a number line, let me just get a red pen so you can see this better. If we're creating a number line and we put zero in the middle, to the right we're going to put positive numbers, but to the left we're going to put negative numbers. And that's an important aspect of math for us all to remember. Now let's move on to the next slide. A couple of vocabulary words that you need to be familiar with our absolute value. Absolute value is when you take the number that they give you and you only look at the value of the number. You do not look at what sign it has. So, for example, if they give you negative 5, the absolute value of negative 5, you take off, you take off the symbol, so the absolute value is 5. If you have a positive 5, its absolute value is also 5 because you take off, off the symbol at the beginning, or the, either the positive or the negative. Um, another vocabulary word you need to know is opposites. Opposites are numbers that are the same distance from zero. So the opposite of positive 7 is a negative 7, and the opposite of a negative 12 is a positive 12. It's always going to be the same number, but with a different sign on the front. We're going to look at two different ways to add numbers <clears throat> that are positive and negative. Um, the first way we're going to look at is very visual. It's using number lines, something that we've been doing for years and years. So if we, if we use this method to start with, then we should be able to move on to the absolute value method once we have in our heads how this number line stuff works with the negative numbers on it. Um, so here's an example. When you, well, the example and the rules together. When you add positive numbers, pardon me there, um, if you go to add positive numbers, you're going to move to the right on the number line. And if you're adding negative numbers, you're going to move to the left. So an example of adding a positive number is right here, where we have negative 2 plus 3 equals 1. We start with the first number they give us, negative 2, and we put a dot there. So on negative 2, we have a dot. And then we need to move three places to the right, because the next number they give us is plus 3. So we move 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3, and that gives us an answer of 1. Okay, our second example is if we're adding negatives. So our second example, negative 2 plus negative 2 equals negative 4. We would start at negative 2 on the number line. So we start at negative 2. We're going to add a negative number, so we're going to move to the left. So we move to the left two places, 1, 2, which takes us over to negative 4. Now the other rules that we can use are absolute value rules. You have to have an understanding of the absolute values though. Throw off those signs, get rid of them, follow the rules, and then add your signs back in at the end. <clears throat> to add numbers with the same sign, you're going to add their absolute values and then give the sum the same sign that you started off with. So in the first example, you have negative 2 plus negative 2 first thing we're going to do is we're going to change those into absolute values. So we have the absolute value of 2 plus the absolute value of 2. We're adding them because they had the same sign. They were both negatives. 2 plus 2 equals 4. So far, so good. Now we have to go back to our original problem and look and see what sign did both of the numbers have. Both of the numbers had a negative sign in front, so our answer also has to have a negative. The second rule to follow is when you're adding numbers with different signs. If you add numbers with different signs, you need to subtract their absolute values and then give the difference the same sign as the larger absolute. So here's an example of that. If you have negative 6 and you're adding positive 8, you need to set up a subtraction problem. They have different signs. The 6 is negative. The 8 is positive. When you set up the subtraction problem, you have the absolute value of 8 because 8 is the larger number, so it needs to go first. Minus, we're subtracting because they had different signs the absolute value of 6, pardon me again, we subtract those two, 8 minus 6 equals 2. Now we go back to our original problem and we look, we had a negative 6 and we had an 8. 
which one of those has the larger value? 8 has the larger value and it's a positive number. So our answer is also going to be positive. And I believe this is our last slide before we start a few practice problems. Um, the last slide talks about the addition property of opposites. The addition property of opposites saves us some work in the end. We know that if the two numbers in the problem are opposites, like positive 2 and negative 2, which is the example they give us, it automatically equals 0. So if we have negative 5 plus positive 5, negative 5 and positive 5 are opposites, so we know it's going to equal 0. No matter what the number is, if they're opposites, it's always going to equal 0. Now let's go on to a couple examples. When we do these examples, I'm going to look at them from both the number line standpoint and the absolute value standpoint. You need to use the method that's best for you to solve these. Okay, our first problem is 4 plus 9. They're both positive numbers, so we're going to add their, we're going to add their absolute values when we follow the absolute value rule. I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to go ahead and do this on the number line first. We take the first number that they give us, which is 4, and we put a dot there. Okay? Our number line rules tell us that if we're adding a positive number, we move to the right. So we're going to move to the right 9 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 takes us to 13. So our answer to that problem is 13. Now, going on to the absolute value method. Our absolute value rule tells us that if both of the numbers in the problem have the same sign, we're going to add their values. So we take the absolute value of 4, and we add it to the absolute value of 9, which gives us 13. We go back to our original problem, 4 plus 9, and we see that they're both positive numbers, so our answer also has to be positive. Okay, on to our next example, negative 8 plus 8. This one's really easy. We don't even have to do any of the work because 8, negative 8 and positive 8 are opposites. So we know it's going to be equal to 0. And we can just write opposites there if we're worried about showing our work so that our teacher knows that we know what we're doing. Okay, here's another problem. Negative 3 plus 10. Negative 3, we put a dot on negative 3. And we need, we're adding a positive number, so we're going to move to the right 10 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That takes us to 7. If we use our absolute value method, we're going to, we're going to subtract because our rules tell us that if the two numbers in the original problem have different signs, we have to subtract their values. So we take the bigger one, 10, first and subtract its absolute value from 3, which is going to give us 7. 10 minus 3 is 7. And then we go back to our original problem and say, which number has the biggest value, 3 or 10? 10? 10 has the biggest value. It's positive, so our answer has to be positive. Let's do one more example, and we'll be done. 10 plus negative 2. We're going to start at 10 on the number line. We're adding a negative number, so we need to move left on the number line. We're going to move left two places, 1, 2, and that gives us the answer of 8. Now let's use the absolute value method. We're adding two numbers that have different signs, so that tells us we have to subtract their values. We look at the biggest one first, so we use the absolute value of 10. We're going to subtract the value of the other number, which is 2. 10 minus 2 is 8. We go back to the original problem. Which number has the larger value, 10 or 2? 10 has the larger value, it's positive, so our answer is also going to be positive. 